Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20, everyone, on Tyranny on the Horizon Part 3, I believe. Um, last session, the players encountered that uh, Quinn was not such a good guy, as in fact he has been deemed to commit many murders, which the king, Ronald Drake, approached the stage to present that information to everyone. In getting that information, the players found out that the king's daughter died to retrieve it, and uh, Quinn was then arrested and held to be executed later in the night. Uh, the player, well, uh, Arden, at the bookstore, went to seek refuge with Matthias, who let him take the place upstairs. In doing so, Bork and Aegis then approached that building, that same building, uh, to meet a very tall Goliath, who was still Matthias, just in disguise. And he tried to play it off, although it didn't work as Bork noticed the hand that was on the counter, deeming it returned. Uh, then uh, afterwards, <laughs> Aegis tried to somewhat sneaky, but not really, go up to the second level, in which he started climbing the stairs. And before Matthias could really enforce the rule, uh, Arden just decided to come out and say the jig was up. They then had a good talk uh, about leaving, getting out of here, until they were disrupted by red sunlight, sounds of war, uh, black cloudy skies with crackling energy, and an 80-foot man dressed uh, in black armor with spikes coming off of his bracers and his shoulders, uh, standing 80 feet across from the building, staring at them with red fiery eyes. The players then talked and tried to decide what to happen. The hand ran off in which uh, the statue hand ran off and uh, Arden went to go catch it in which he went to the back room. But in doing so, uh, through all that mayhem, uh, Aegis and Bork both left to go deal with the big scary. Uh, Aegis taking the lead on that, keeping his shield up so he does not make eye contact. Uh, Bork just went enough to cast Featherfall, uh, to which it was successful, but soon after, the massive beam slaughtered all the innocent folk with his mace. And that is where we pick up from. I have the hand, though, right? You have the hand. Nice. The hand is secured. Yeah. Uh, you just witnessed uh, Aegis that the uh, mace has scraped across and the bloody remains of people along with it. Would I have seen uh, Warpnark walk out, like, be on the street? Yeah, you would know he's out there as well. Uh, I still feel like we have no chance of taking this thing on, so I'm going to start heading back uh, to the bookstore. Okay. Great scouting. Yeah, it's just scouting. Uh, as you turn around and begin to walk, you find that you can't go forward. Arden told you to stay inside. <laughs> you feel stopped, and you feel a burning passion of anger grow. But uh, it's moving quite slower as your war for you're mostly mechanical. Yeah. And uh, doesn't seem to be taking effect as quickly. So I can't move towards the bookstore, but can I move at all? You can move backwards. But you can't go towards the bookstore or anything away from the being. Arden says, I'm, I'm gonna cast our mention door. Like, if I feel the same way, like I can't go any further, then. But Bork Nork is really having a bit difficult time with this because he really wants to just uh, end this man's career, put it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows that he doesn't have a chance, so he's gonna try to go back to the bookstore too. All right, and you turn around and you find that you actually get dragged very quickly across the ground right to the same distance as Aegis. Okay, and then I cast our mention door right, right behind us. Um, as you're being dragged, though, you notice that the mace of the beast is coming up and Reyes hurls down you cast a mention door and you're both shot back into the bookshop. And you hear the tremble and the whole building shakes and dust seeps through the cracks of the floorboards. You see Arden <laughs> leaning against the bookshelf and says... Productive. I owe you a great favor. <laughs> you all then no, you hear, you, you feel as though like a, 
an invading force is invading your mind, and you begin, you hear the words, even, even heroes die sometimes. Good thing I'm not a hero. In which case, through the cracks of the blinds, you can see that the light returns to normal, and the sounds of war have stopped. I look through the blinds. Look through the blinds, and the town is normal again, although that smear of dead people is still there. I'm going to go, I'm going to try and hide that. I'm going to clean it up as quick as I can to avoid panic. So, like, the giant guy's gone? He's gone. The skies are normal. So, the it, it was gone. meant to just kill us and space still out, I think. Yeah. Kill the heroes that the town loves. Oh, we held out. We, we, we held out. Uh, I'm like, let's take care of those bodies. Last thing we need is people to see a bunch of dead guys smeared across there like peanut butter. You're right. <laughs> right. I agree. Uh, so, how do you take care of the bodies because a lot of it is very smushed and smeared prestigitation yeah. oh okay you have that yeah cast um, prestigitation pretty well up so easily enough you see that everything begins to just wisp away and almost burn away in flakes and after that uh, I don't know what you guys want to do but I'm going to go back to that hand I feel like we need to have a talk with the king let's regroup in the bookstore uh, yeah I'm going to dispel a mold earth and, and like just as soon as it's done we've got the hand Okay. Right. Uh, we'll the spells and everything kind of just falls. The hand starts jangling through, but you quickly snatch it up, and it's like it turns back into a statue the second you hold yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I turn to Matthias and say, Any of your books can help me with this? Well, uh, you know, I'm not really a book man, but uh, let me let me look around. Maybe I'll find something. You do that. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Matthias kind of looks around and pushes the books out of the way, picks one of it. He's one of the statues. I might help. I love you. <laughs> I take the book. Uh, uh, I'll take that one. It obviously will not help. Uh, uh, it reads Statues of the Gods. Oh, he did say this was a deity statue for a god symbol, so I'm going to look for it. Uh, no, that's what he said. He didn't tell me which god. Oh, no, he did. Uh, Bane. Bane. He said Bane. Yeah, I'm going to look up statues about Bane. Okay. As you siphon through it, what would Bork and Aegis like to do? Uh, Bork is going to cast a spell of magic on the book with the dagger. Okay. Um, you cast a spell magic. Now you can find yeah. out if it works. I'm going to perform maintenance on my uh, weapons and armor. Okay, I will like take the dagger out of the books. All right, you begin to slide the daggers out of the books. I'm not like going to read the books yet, though, just because I'm not sure. He's not sure if he's ready to learn what it spelled. And as you slide the dagger out, silence. Okay. And then he just puts his dagger back. Neat trick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very cool. And yeah, that's all that's he's doing for now. He eventually he might look in the books, but not at this exact moment, because he feels like there's better stuff to do. All right, so now I'll give everyone a moment to do anything they'd like to do uh, within the city area or the bookshop, and then I will just, if no one wants to do anything or they do what they do, then I'm just going to go to the night with the execution. Okay, uh, well, you can go through the city and do stuff. <coughs> yeah, you can go through, can the, city go through the city and do stuff. Yeah, you all can. You can do whatever really? you like. I'm not in any trouble. I thought I was in trouble. Well, you don't know. <laughs> You're not entirely sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a wary person, so I'm not going to do anything. I Actually, I am. I'm going to summon Cayman. I'm going to summon Feymire. I want him back. He's still up in my chambers. So I'm going to summon my familiar. Okay. Uh, easily you do so. Your familiar then reappears from the ground up. Yeah. My little Cayman, little <laughs> mini creator guy. Yeah. I like to catch him every day. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a last time. He lifts it up and he's clearly <laughs> liking it, tipping his head back and forth. There's no man. All right. Uh, but then, yeah, uh, I will I will leave the bookstore. I'm going to read my that book about the... Bane, I'm gonna inspect the statue. It seems that hu- disgusting humans love having disgusting pets. <laughs> At least I'm not <laughs> stupid enough to walk out into a war zone and act like I can do anything about it. We were trying At to figure out brave enough to actually go out instead of hiding in a building. There's a difference between bravery and stupidity. We were yeah. trying to figure out if we could help in any ways. I was trying to help those who were caught in the crossfire of my river scrappy, but. That's not your fault. What happened isn't your fault. We'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, is there time for a long rest? Yeah. You know, you guys are going to have a long Perfect. rest. As okay, awesome. When the sun came back, it was only about 4 o'clock. So. Uh, you guys all take a long rest. 
as you chillax in the bookshop for the night, Matthias, uh, assuming you put him down now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. As, soon as, as, as soon as the light faded and everything, yeah. I put him back down. Yeah, he, uh, as soon as I got the hand, I put him down. He kind of, uh, very appalled by what's going on, yet trusting you, uh, just continues to organize his shop to keep his mind off of the troubles. And Augustine and whatever other spare time I will start looking at the books. Uh, around the middle of the night. Uh, Revelation. So. <laughs> you were reading the book, so about the middle of the night, you suddenly start having a dream that slowly changes. What, what, what would you like to be dreaming about to start off with first? Uh, probably the Feywild. All right, so you're dreaming about the Feywild. He often has Wild. nightmares about the Feywild. You're dreaming about the Feywild, a very it is. creepy and hostile area. Well, the Feywild's like an anti-material plane. Everything's very grandeur and like... Like, it's permanent twilight, uh, and everything is a little more intricate and fanciful in a way. So it's beautiful, yet horrifying. So I'm just, like, probably having a nightmare again of, like, running through uh, a, a bay city, being chased by some kind of, like, Fomorian monster. So basically what you're dreaming currently is you are in a very nice stony uh, area with light snow that's drizzling down. Um, there are very tall towers of clocks on them that are turning around. Uh, the place is empty, though. It's quiet, and you are currently running through the streets, up curved stairs, um, through alleyways that are very immaculate and clean. Um, and all you hear behind you is... <laughs> and uh, you can see, like, as you look back, you see, like, vines and stuff being slapped around edges. Um, and that's the creature chasing you. But before uh, you reach the end of the alleyway, suddenly your whole dream changes and you are in a completely dark void, and across from you are two fiery eyes staring at you. Ah, this is a much better of a dream. <laughs> I approach the eyes. Uh, as you approach the eyes, they get farther away. Until finally they do disappear, and you feel that as though you're falling, but you don't know in which direction. Uh, you begin to feel sleepy, and then tired, and then exhausted. Until eventually your vision fades to white. Um, and as soon as that happens, it regains back. And you wake up on a pile of books. But you suddenly have the knowledge that uh, in the book that you read, you know what this statue belongs to and what, what god it is. And it's the god Bane, who is the god of tyranny. Okay. And this hand? Uh, the hand is gone. So, during the rest... Uh... I don't actually have to like, sleep. You have to meditate. I don't know what you're more for. So yeah, yeah, so I literally just stand still. Pretty much. And yeah, I can still see and hear normally. Yeah, throughout the night, you don't hear. So actually, I'll have your own perception check. Me? Okay. No, uh. Oh, you're looking at me. over here. 13. Yeah, you hear nothing throughout the night. Okay. You see anything. Um. Yeah, so you, as that happens, you wake up. It's morning, or, no, it's not morning, sorry. It's 10, 10 p.m. Uh, cold sweat. Yeah. You all wake up. But you wake up a couple minutes earlier in a cold sweat and panicked. Uh, but you feel okay. But you find that the statue is now gone. From the books you read, I'll have your own intelligence. Okay. Before you, obviously, took your long rest. Like a check or a statement through? Uh, just a check. Intelligence check. 16. 16. Okay, you've taken the time to read some books before you rest about it. It's the demon books I'm reading. Oh, the like demon the books. You're reading the books of pain? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Okay. 16. 16. Which one are you reading specifically? Uh, the book on mental pain, physical, or soul? Uh, I'm thinking probably mental, because okay. this huge figure seemed to have some mental abilities. Um, as you open the book to the first page, it's written in Inferno. But when you open it, you feel a massive headache surge in your brain. Oh, that's the mental one. Yeah. And it begins to hurt and sear until you have to close it. Yeah, eventually I close it then. Mm -hmm. Then I'll look at the one about the soul. One about the soul. All right. Um, as you open that one, it is written in Celestial. And, uh, in doing so, you feel as though your inside is your very morals and the decisions you like to make are being corrupted and twisted into doing devious and aggressive tasks. I close the book right away. And you slap the book closed. 
We'll see. I'll check the last one. Physics game. Should I see guy? <laughs> um, roll a d20 for him. Oh boy. So two. Oh boy. Uh, as you open the book, immediately your eyes get filled with like fire, and your whole body starts searing in fiery flames. And when you slap the book closed, you are severely burned right now. Um, your hit points is two. Hit points is two. Like out of total, or like that is his total. That's his total hit points is two. Like total max hit points now? No, no, no. Oh, that's just okay. what you have right okay. now. Oh god, that's two hit points. Still, that's that's why I'm glad he's doing this before a long rest. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. That's too bad. I, I I was hoping you'd say like it was like Primordial or Sylvan or something. Yeah, like, you were like what language was just me? You didn't get to see the okay. fire took your vision too quickly. Okay. Maybe you should find something else for light reading. <laughs> uh, what okay. is Infernal? Is that Elvish script? Infernal is demonic script. Yeah. Oh, what it's about like so, like, and Celestial's Elvish script. Celestial's like angel kind of script. Yeah, but I mean like it's based off of. Elvish oh yeah, script. it is based off. So of could I do like a rough reading? Because I can speak Elvish. Like a rough translation, so you can speak out. You can try, but, but you, you no, know. I I can I can read it. like so like it's there's basic scripts to every language, and there's like dwarvish, elvish, and, and celestial then, has its elvish trans. It's like the base script is elvish. Yeah, so I could do maybe a rough translation. It's possible. Sure. I don't know try. It's up to you, so. I would like to you try to player thing. decipher the words anyway if I can. Okay. Uh, to help out because I know you're interested. Yeah. So. You can go ahead and roll, I guess, intelligence. Intelligence? Intelligence to see how you can decipher the writing. You're going in the book of mental pain. Roll the seven. Seven. Yeah. Uh, as you open the book again, you get that searing, blasting headache in your brain. And upon trying to read some of the words and decipher the language, it gets too appalling. Uh, you make out some letters like T and H, but you have to close it before your brain hurts and explodes. Ah. Ah. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I tried. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. Do you guys just enjoy pain? <laughs> <laughs> I hang out with you, don't I? <laughs> Do I be, uh, can I, like, insight to see if the soul one would do any damage to you, uh, ages? Mm. As a uh, War for it should be have a soul. I feel mm-hmm. emotions and pain. He feels emotions and pain, but having a soul, no. Because he's mechanical. I was created. You were created, but not with a soul like other beings. <laughs> the soul one was in Celestial, right? Yep. Do you know Celestial? Nope. Right I know Common Dwarvish and Elvish. You can try what I try and get like a rough transcript of it. I do owe you a favor. Don't owe me anything. <laughs> Ah, ah. You just hear Matthias upstairs and just hear bookshelving. <laughs> Clearly just like bugged about everything that's going on. Yeah, I guess I'll try reading it. Roll an intelligence check. As you open the book of the soul. Thirteen. You open the book and you don't feel anything. Uh, you take time to read and uh, try and begin to decipher at which point, through your reading, uh, with each word you read, it seems as though you get the, the feeling of twisted dread and corruption, but it's building significantly slower on you. Uh, through your readings, you discover that uh, the first page is kind of an explanation of what the book is about, and it reads the sense of what you grasp. Oh, hold on, I actually have to pull this up. I can't remember it. Ah, right. Um, it's a demonic uh, book of magic, basically. So a book that demons have created to specialize in corruption of the soul. Uh, in this book are list various spells that corrupt souls in different ways to make them do different things and have different outcomes. For example, there are some that can turn a man into a demon. There's some that can turn an entire army into nothing but corrupted... Uh, skeletal decaying zombie figures yeah um which are the more powerful ones other ones uh, reference how you can control the masses with proper corruption their spells to control masses um, and keep them still the way that they are and through at the bottom you you see the same symbol of pain 
on the bottom right corner of the page. We're investigating this bean guy, right? Yeah. That's where that hand is. We should burn these books. None of this knowledge will be useful to us, and it should not go into anybody else's hands. That's what I was saying in the beginning. What if we keep them for now? Don't let anyone else ever get them. Knowledge is power. And no one needs this power. That book uh, sets you on fire. I just think that if we're dealing with something like we dealt with a few minutes ago, we might need some kind of otherworldly power. Roll well, wisdom save. Uh, 18. 18. You faintly begin to hear the calling of the soul book uh, in your head. It's it's like it's it wants you to take it. You feel like you should take it in order. It's telling you like, come, grab me, keep me safe. I know I'm touch. Orknark's gonna try to not listen to it. All right, I'll have you roll wisdom save. It's twelve. Uh, it begins growing in your head. The voice keeps repeating it. Keep me safe. Let no one touch. And you feel more and more convinced you need to keep this book safe and let no one touch it. I I do ask for the book back. You don't can have those two books, but I'll be keeping this one. Don't give them to him. <laughs> <laughs> These books are dead. Can I do an insight on them, actually? On the books? No, um, on... Yeah, work. you can insight them. Yeah. Uh, 25. 25. Uh, he visibly sees, seems compelled to keep the book safe. These books are dangerous, Mark. And they're on hands there. Maybe we are the wrong hands. In everybody's hands, they're dangerous. I say we burn them now. I just think that there's the opportunity if another one of those giants comes, we might need to use other magic. I just think we should... Keep the idea in hand. I don't agree. I told you, dark dark magic is a stain. And I cast the cantrip, create bonfire. And I say, you throw this book in there right now. You begin to see torchlight through the windows and um, guards, men walking uh, past the square across from you towards the castle. You assume it's about time that the execution is beginning. Burn the books. We'll talk about this later. And I, I put the two books I have back. Yeah, right. we don't have time for this. I toss a soul book into the fire, and I'll say it. <laughs> for once, I look at you with pride. Fire? He said he created oh, a bonfire. Create bonfire. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, you throw the book into the fire, and you guys just leave? I leave. All right. Um, a wise decision. Leave. As the book gets tossed in the fire, Bork. Uh, Bork just stands there looking at the book for a minute before he ends up leaving. All right. I'm very disappointed in what just happened. As Aegis and Argon leave first and go through the door, Bork, you notice that the book doesn't seem to be burning. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. All right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Only makes sense. In uh, fact, you hear it calling to you now, but in pain. I'll use Mage Hand to grab it. Okay, you cast Mage Hand, you pick the book up from the fire. And bring it to the closed, seat. though. Oh, it's closed. Okay. And I, I have Mage Hand put it in my backpack. And as it goes in your backpack, you hear a voice once more. Keep me safe. No touch. And you have the books. Great, our friend is busy. And then I, I book. just, like, put out the fire. Oh, it'll, it'll dissipate after that. Okay. okay. Fire goes out. Um, and you, the three of you then begin to head to the execution area, which is held in the castle courtyard. Oh, I do tell the guys what we're doing. Okay. Uh, he still stays. He doesn't want to see nothing. So he wouldn't be allowed to anyway. I'm just letting him know we're leaving. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we might return. Okay. So, I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. I am. He's not exactly trusting of everything that's going on. Alright, so you cast yourself a nice set of Mage Armor that quickly, like, gleams over your body and disappears as soon as it does. Okay. Uh, you begin to approach the castle gate, uh, leading into the courtyards. Uh, through the barred gate, you can see that there is the same stage you guys had before, except this time there's a noose on it. And there's a man with a black sack and two apples over his head, and the executioner. Gaudy outfit. Uh, you see various like uh, guards surrounding. The king is uh, up on the castle doors, just standing there. 
with his uh, king's guard beside him. Uh, you also see Quinn standing beside him as well. Beside the king? Behind him, though. Right behind him. Like tied up? No, you just see him standing behind the king. So first of all, while we're walking, I'm going to tell them that the book wasn't burning, so I took it back. <sighs> we're going to regret that decision, but we have bigger pressure manning. I, I will tell them I didn't hear whispers from the book, telling me to keep it safe. Which I don't exactly trust, but I, I do think it's good Thank to you for being honest. honest. We need we'll to deal with that later, them. though. Yes. That son of a bitch isn't tied up. And he's on the Quinn is still on the stage, by the way. He's on the stage. But there's a Quinn behind the king as well. I should explain that better. I'm sorry. There's two Quinns? There's two Quinns. One's behind, right behind the king. And the other one is on the stage. And you see as you approach the gates, the guards open the doors to let you in. <sighs> Does the king know there's two Quinns? Like, is he like aware of the one behind him? You have no idea. Can I try and so see him? Just focused. He just seems focused on the execution at hand. Um, and then uh, the king steps forward as you guys approach. Uh, Gwen! And then right in your heads you hear, Everyone can die. And then the Quinn behind the king steps no. forward no. with the blade. I knew it. And stabs him. Straight in the back as he grabs his neck and pulls him backwards. I cast far step again. Can you see? I teleport right to the king. You teleport right to the king, but the stabbing is commenced. I can heal him though, probably. Ah, stabs in the back. You see the glowing, firing red eyes shine on the quinn that has stabbed the king. And with that, he just poofs and disappears as black smoke. He disappeared? The king? No, no. Oh. The king falls right to the, the ground. And, and no one else. Knew he was there. Everyone knew he was there. Hmm? Everyone knew that other Quinn was there. Oh, fuck. Uh, I, I, I hold the, the king, king in my arms, arms, though, and I turn and I say, find some healing magic. Quick. Immediately, the king's guard disperse, and the guardsmen are dispersing as well. The executioner stays to guard the real Quinn there. And, I am um, walking to the other Quinn, too. Oh, I just stay here. Can I cast two tech magic? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, as you're holding the king, you see that the stab went through his chest as well, and it seems to be quickly decaying his whole body as this black uh, essence is going through his veins across this everything. That seems to be magical. Seems to be very magical. I cast this called magic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go and you poof out a bright blue light over the king, and you notice that uh, it stops, but there's a tire hole in the king that has pretty much crumbled in on itself. Is there any way of reviving him? Can you heal it? And the king is taking his final breaths. Oh, wait, I can. Uh, he lies in your arms. I can Stay do something. This. <gasps> and you can see there's just a huge hole in his chest, and the, the, pretty much the top of his skin is dust, and the inside is still normal. Uh, I use my master. I. Wait. Use an action to consume, consume the reserve of my. Transmutation zone. Okay. And I use Panacea, which means you remove all curses, diseases, and poisons stuck in the creature that you touch with the transmitter stone, and the creature also regains all of its, all of its hit points. Yes. Right. So you cash yeah. as you put the stone over the king. You, you, sh- you literally blast this divine yellow energy that surges over him, and uh, his insides begin to rebuild. His skin begins to cover back up, and he begins to look healthy as his color returns to his face and his body. And suddenly you... <gasps> that was close. Good job, Bork. Thank you. Thank you very much. I knew something was up. Well, I saw that Quinn. You saved my life. At this point, the King's Guard returned with herbalists and healers, um, seeing the shocking that the King is okay now. It's all right, it's all right. Uh, the King then gets up. What... What happened? There was a Who second, was that? There was a second Quinn that was standing behind you with red, glowing eyes. He stabbed you with a like demon-like uh, dagger. I, I, I uh, then just vanished. And I get up and I make my way to the uh, the real Quinn and I grab him and I, by like the neck and I'm like, I need answers, <laughs> and you're gonna tell me them. And Quinn, you, and as Quinn responds, you just hear his kind of robotic now laugh as the vocal cords are gone, and he just kind of laughs back at you. He laughs? He laughs at you. Well, I'm killing this guy. More of a cackle. Uh, it's very robotic sounding. 
I use the cantrip shocking oh. grasp. We should let the executioner kill him. Oh, wait, I'm pissed. Okay. You cast shocking grasp? Oh, not really in character. I'm awful. Okay. Oh, I listen to Bork and I, I release him and I say, You're lucky the science man's here. And as you release him, you're crackling lightning energy in your hands, surging a little bit, I showing your anger. I dissipate it and I step back. <clears throat> Can I cast Detect Magic on Quinn? You can. Um, as you shine another blast of blue energy around yeah. Quinn, uh, you detect no magic from him. Okay. No magic at all. No magic? So he's just a freak. But he's still laughing. He's just cackling away and he won't stop. And I don't sense any other magic within 30 feet of me? You do not. Okay, cool. Uh, the king now kind of little seems exhausted and wary. He holds his head and struggles a little bit to stay standing. And so the king's got to bring him a seat to sit in. Very well. Um, carry on with the execution. And he waves his hand and gestures to the executioner. Who, uh, then, uh, effectively, he looks at you and uh, he kind of lifts up his mask. He's a little smile, puts it down. And he goes off to the side of the stage and grabs his really long axe. What kind of smile are you giving? Like, like a, a nice one. Like a, oh, okay. Smile. Like he, he sympathizes with me. Okay. Yeah. He sympathizes with I thought you meant like he was about to cut my fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> and he, bring, he walks over to you and he says, You do the honors. <laughs> I don't even hesitate. I take that axe and I just immediately swing it and I cut I cut Quinn's head off. And you absolutely lob his absolutely head off. no hesitation. And it hits the floor and rolls off the stage and his body drops. Yeah. <sighs> the king then <sighs> looks up. And, well, it's done. I'm going to question the king about uh, if he experienced the same giant man and if he knows anything about that. Control the giant uh, eighty foot man. We okay. were stuck in the library watching it happen. I know of no such thing. I never saw no big man. The kingdom seemed fine. The city seemed fine. Yeah, yeah, it's it's war. Uh, it's, it's uh, other than we saw that all the uh, civilians were moving on their own spread. Oh, okay. Other than also so distance, it could be like brainwashing or something like that. I feel like maybe killing them might be the wrong choice. We might have unleashed something greater by killing this maybe or maybe not Quinn. You're saying we should have let this thing live? We have no idea what forces we're dealing with now, but right now. I think I must get the body or body and the head to make sure that it is like completely devoid of life. You can, yeah. Okay. Investigation. Or roll medicine actually. I'm not biased because that creation not was a thing that needed to be disposed of. He was a failure of a warforge. Uh, you are credit him into the inspector to make yeah. sure it's dead. Body and head. Yeah. In which it is very dead. Okay. There's no signs of life. We were arguing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no way I was going to let that thing live. I agree. He was a failure of a warforge. He, did, he didn't deserve to live. I'm just worried about what we may have unleashed. So am I, but no one else saw what happened. I don't think it had anything to do with Quinn specifically. Quinn specifically? He had the same red eyes as what we had encountered. No, that was a fake Quinn. It seems like the big monster fellow had a lot to do with just us, I believe. Something's after us. Do you guys really care about this city? then you will agree with me that we should leave. Thank you, Rick. Think we might have to leave. Where would we go? I turn to the king and I say, where's this thieves go? <sighs> well, it's located in Northhelm. That's the last I heard of their main base of operations is located. Northhelm? Northhelm, yes. That's where we go. We find this thieves go. We kill who's ever in charge. We put an end to this. Game. Well, we don't know if the Thieves Guild hasn't been to do with this. If you think Quinn's, thinks Quinn's associated with it, Quinn's from the Thieves Guild. If A was going to have answers, it'd be them. Fair enough. Uh, if I just don't know if the huge monster hasn't been to do with them. 
It seems more like the opposing side of the war might may have something more to do with it. It's our only lead right now, though. Fair enough. Unless you have any other ideas. Aegis? We have no other leads. And we'll make for North Hill in the morning? Sure. We need someone. To, we need to make sure the king will be looked after well, though. But now that Quinn's gone, there's no real threat from him within the city. I mean, there was the, that second Quinn. You believe that Quinn is gone? I think I'm pretty certain that cut us off very well. This Quinn is dead. There's nothing left of him. We can burn the body. And I just create bonfire again, and I kick the body in. I don't really wait for a response. All right, the body begins to burn. I don't like leaving loose ends. The king, at this point, he gets up and turns, and as he's about to walk away, you all hear a screech recognizing very much of a dragon. Uh, As you turn and look outside the city walls, you see a dragon heading and approaching to the city very quickly and at a fast pace. And right before it reaches the wall, you see (laughs) this... Arcane shield pops up from the walls and begins to create a dome over the city. And the dragon collides with it and it ripples throughout the shield. And you watch the dragon then descends down to the ground. Uh, In which case you begin to see an ASMR male man who is uh, dressed in uh, just steel armor. But he holds a staff on his back and he's rushing to the gate. Uh, and he blasts through the guards and blasts the gate open, but not touching them, actually using blasts of arcane energy. Then stops and is out of breath. <sighs> King. Uh, sorry, who are, you? who are all three of you? We are the man? guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he squints his eyes. And, all right. I'm Bork Nork. This is... Arden and Aegis were just people trying to help the city. Okay, King Drake, uh, we have a problem. That's apparent. His forces have broke through. He's heading towards the city now. Uh, Who's he? Bane and his forces. They've broken through the last of the defenses they're heading here. I just put up the emergency barrier. Guess we're not going to North Hill. <laughs> they're still uh, f- far out. They've just broken through the border, but they're making their way here, and they should be here soon enough within, I'd say, about a week. What can we do to help? Well, if you really want to do something, I need a bit of an artifact. I talk to Shy. And what is that? <sighs> it's a bracelet. It's said to wield the power of the skies. Currently, it's locked away in some cave uh, not too far from here called Giant's Rest. We need that bracelet. Um, I can I can tell you more about it later, but... I feel like you can tell me about it now. I'm not going to pick up some magical item I know nothing about. Silence. Take me for he, has, he has a point. As he does that, he casts silence on you. <laughs> Prevents you from talking. Counter spell. You can't spell a silence. Yeah. Thank you, Bork. What's the item? You're going to tell me now. All right. Look, follow me into the castle. And uh, the king goes into the castle, so does he. Um, as the, he leads you all to the main throne room, he then stops. And, all right. So, what you're looking for is... Specifically, it's a scorched-looking bracelet, all right? It should be... Hidden under giant's rest. But to to be careful when you're in there, there is a giant who is said to still be sleeping. You don't want to wake him up. Kind of giant. Uh, Big one. I don't know the type. Funny man. No, serious. Did by chance have glowing red eyes, too? No, no. The giant came from 200 years ago. I'm willing to bet it's not the giant we saw. He's massive, but the, the, the vegetation's grown under him. He's under a very deep sleeping spell. Just don't wake him, but it's under him. There's a cave system, and there should be a locked door. Locked double door with a dragon's head on it. You need to get through that door, and there should be the bracelet. I don't know where it would be in that room, but I know it's in there. Don't ask how I know it, but I know it's there. 
You need to get that price and bring it to me if you really want to help. I can use it to focus the energy of this shield into the bracelet and amplify its power by a gargantuan amounts. We'll try our best. You just happened to send three of the greatest heroes out of the city when a large force is coming in? Well, if you don't have to go, I was going to send a king. You were going to send a king on yes. a goose chase? This is what we discussed. This king was moments from death, like five minutes ago. Yes, stabbed by red eyes, right? Yes. Bane. That was Bane? That was Bane, yes. Anytime you see those types of red eyes, that's Bane. Who does Bane look like? I don't know, no one knows his true form, but technically he tends to take on the size of a giant. And he looks very menacing. We, we know. saw him. I think we saw him ourselves. You saw him? Here in the city. He was here in the city. In his giant form. He's got a little more powerful than I expected. Find your bracelet. What you saw there was uh, Blaine travel. Uh, basically, he knows a lot of spells when it comes to teleportation, going from one area to the next. He sent himself to the city clearly, and then he used a vast, probably. What else did you see? Uh, the civilians were mindlessly just wandering this way and that way and whichever way. And Bane had this giant, uh, just a maul, right? Yeah. A giant maul that he crashed down into the ground. Made of, uh, swords with daggers. Yeah, very mean looking. And the people you said, they were just walking around? Yeah, like mindless, just going whichever random direction. Fucking wilds. No doubt that was uh, corruption magic. We had a hand. A hand? A hand of Bane made of stone. Statue? Yes. It's gone. It disappeared in the night. We also found these demon books, uh, the uh, three books of pain. Where are they? In my back here. Pull them out. Quickly, pull them out. I'll pull them out. Just give them to me. Put them here. I use Mage Hand to take them out. Alright, in places. Careful of those. Oh, I know. One of them almost killed me. Has he started talking to you yet? The soul one has. He wants me to keep it. You now have a bond with that book. I tried to read it, but because I didn't know the language. If you open it now, you'll be able to read it, but I don't recommend that. You have a bond with this book. This book is going to speak to you no matter where you are. It's going to try to get to you. It's going to try to get you to read it wherever you do. Reading it will corrupt you and no doubt your soul. In doing so, who knows what kind of being you will become. <sighs> These books are very dangerous. They are to be locked away. I have a place I can put them. All right? And where is that? I can't say. I, I of course you can't. can't. If I speak it, you'll know too. I don't fully trust you three yet. I don't, really I don't, trust, I don't you. trust We don't really trust you yet either, so... Do you trust the king? Yes, no. I do. Well, the king trusts me. The king trusted Quinn for a while there. Didn't really work out for him. Quinn's dead? Yes. Killed him myself. The king's daughter found out he was entangled with a lot of murders of citizens, civilians, people like that. After doing so, you hear another bang that blasts into the arcane shield and the sound rippling through. Uh, I'm taking these books. No the place I can put them. Be safe. No one can find them, not even myself. I'll wipe my memory. But these books cannot be found. They cannot be. They cannot resurface. Can I just incite him? I was just to say that. Yeah, of course. Do so I think ten? Nineteen yeah. plus eight, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Uh, you can't really put a beat on him. Uh, you get he's telling the truth. He's being honest. He seems very worried and honest about these books, and he just needs them to go away. I got a good judge of character. If there's anyone we can trust on, it'd be this guy. Hand him the books. Okay. It's better you don't have him anyway if it's talking to you. Good point. Good. Now that we're on agreement of that. Sentient items usually lead to bad, bad outcomes. Uh, he takes his hand, he puts it in the air. And he swipes his other hand across and he slams it down on the books and he watches this bright yellow energy um, blast from his hand outwards over the books. And as he lifts it up, they're gone. Yeah, that's gone. That's dealt with. Which way is Giant's Rest? 
It'd be about to the north, northwest of here. You can see it over the walls. Massive hill, you can't miss it. You get there, you get the item, and you come straight back. You don't dilly-dally, you don't mess with anything or anyone you see out there. Bane is in control of the land now, which means he has power to mess with everyone. Can you keep that dragon away from us? The shield of the I, I could try to do my best to keep the dragons away from you. That'd be I can. Hold on, I will be right back. And he watches, he takes a step back, and his body kind of just vanishes. And then it vanishes back in about a minute later. Here. And he hands it to you, uh, Aegis. And it's just a big, heavy orb. Okay. That's reflective. Take it. Um, that orb. Shall keep the dragons distracted away from you for a bit. It's a bit of um deterrent. Um, and if the dragon gets too close, that thing will most likely start blowing or glowing a bright, 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 bright yellow energy, and which it'll just blast out and emit, and it'll blind them. It should deter them for a little bit, make them turn tail. How big is this one? Uh, it's um, it's about a, the size of a basketball, but it's dense. Heavy? It's heavy, yeah. So it's, I'm going to uh, take my rope with my Dungeoneer's pack and I'll like secure it to my shield. Okay. So it's like right on the front. All right, yeah, you take the rope and you make a crisscross pattern and you secure it in place. Ooh, smart. I can probably teleport us to the hill if it's with, like, it's the hill within sight. Where you guys are now? You guys are still on ground level, so you can't see a little okay. How long it walk? So, like, once we're outside the city gates, would we be able to see the hill? Oh yeah. yeah. So is it like a like less than a day? It should take you about an hour to get there. Why waste the spell slot? Right now. I mean, mm. what's a spell slot? <laughs> <laughs> like Let's I save said, ourselves from the fight. Be careful. Like I said, Bang's in control. Everything you see, it's probably not real. It's probably corrupted in some way. Give us horses, then. Trust nothing. You want horses? You can take some of those stables here. The faster we get there, the better. Yeah. And I don't trust anybody. Good. Then you're already on a good path. All right, I have a job to do. Kind of a lonely path. But... <laughs> you have your jobs, I have my job. There we go. There's our plan. Go find that artifact and bring it to me. Will do. I make my way down to the stables. All right. Yeah, uh, you guys then walk through the city up to the front gate. As you do so, you see various, like, um, looks like arcane shots of fire and lightning and some dragons that are hovering over the dome keep blasting and running into it. The place is completely under attack, but it seems from a far distance. Um, you reach the stable soon enough, and you reach mount yourself up a horse. Uh, do you, any of you know how to ride a horse? Do we want our changeling friend with us? I do want to bring Matthias. I want to bring I want to bring Matthias. Uh, I, I have vehicles, mad vehicles. It does. Yeah. That's like a cart, though. It wouldn't be like a horse. A horse is just like... A horse is still a land vehicle, yeah. technically. Is it? Yeah. Well, I don't I'm have proficiency, proficiency, so... So, okay. So, I'm going to have proficient. you both roll animal handling. You easily enough. Can. I rolled a 14. 11. Oh, no, it's plus 3, so I rolled a 16. 16. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll easily enough. You kind of... You try to go on one of the bigger horses, but it bucks you off, and you don't know what to do, so you just take your time, and you take one of the stuntier um, donkey horses. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember what the name is. Ponies. Ponies, yeah. You take a pony and you mount that one up. Uh, <laughs> this is a orc. <laughs> yeah, he's riding a pony. I'm not bad at You can't ride a horse. Oh, just six feet. Uh, you mount yourself a horse easily enough, too. You have um, their. Pardon. You have a black steed. Yeah. Black uh, steed? Yeah. Nice. Nice silk black. I put uh, Feymar on my shoulder. Okay. I'll let him ride on my shoulder and then. I, I scratch him up. He's a good guy. And uh, uh, Aegis, yeah. you so have. I'm gonna need a big fucking horse. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like 400 pounds. <laughs> yeah. The horse you step on is a horse that's a, it's a beast of burden. <laughs> so it's meant to carry heavy loads. <laughs> Take a war horse. <laughs> Although, as you get on a horse and get on the saddle, you feel the horse's horse just bend <laughs> in a little bit. Oh, but not enough to cause like damage, but the horse. Definitely seems uncomfortable, but it holds you, and it's uh, a mixture of white and gray tone. Cool. <clears throat> Almost like a, a marble kind of design, very uh, wavy. 
All right, and with that, you all then. Oh wait, you grab Matthias as well. I do. I, I ride. I take an extra horse and I ride down and I uh, I, I jump off uh, my black steed and I, I walk into the library or the bookstore and I say, uh, "Looks like you're gonna have a longer day than you thought, Matthias." He wants you just like piling some books on the counter. Um, what, why? You said you didn't want to run a bookstore. No, I don't. And you're coming with me. Where? We can use all the help we can get. We're going to Giant's Rest. Uh, you know there's a giant there, right? If anyone knows anything about that giant, it's you. God damn it. <laughs> get on the horse. <laughs> Fine. He slides the books off the counter. <laughs> <laughs> and he over it all epically. And you stand up and he's like, I'm back. <laughs> and he goes and he watches. He uh, runs up the stairs quickly. Uh, and then there's like five minutes that you have to sit there waiting. You're scuffling and scrounging around. He comes back down. This time he's wearing like a bit of tarnished iron plated armor uh, with no helmet. Uh, he's got a sword on his hip, a short sword, another one on his other hip. He says, ah, all right, let's go. Awesome. And then he right. mounts up on the horse. Um, Let's head to Giant's Rest. As you ride back and as you both are waiting at the gate, you see that the sky is completely nighttime, so it's all dark. And the strikes of arcane energy that hit the shield will create blasts of light, um, like fireworks pretty much. It just flashes all over the city. Um, it's actually kind of beautiful, but terrifying because you know what it is. Yeah. Um, um, as we're riding, I'm going to tell them about the, the dream that I had. I saw the red eyes. I don't mention the Fey Wild one. That's pretty personal. But I do mention that I saw those red eyes. So Bane again. Bane was in my head. Bane? It's good that he told us that. That sounds pretty spooky. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Uh, at which point you approach the gate with your companions. And uh, you signal the guard to open the gate. In which they begin pulling the lever. And they go going up and up and down. And as you walk your horses out through the gate, you are opened up to a completely dark land. Uh, the trees, the, the pine on the trees, the pine needles have fallen off and the trees are naked. Um, the ground itself, you see various, like, uh, seems to be scorch marks along the grass. So there's a lot of dirt patches and very little vegetation now. Uh, the wind that blows is very cold and wispy. The tone that the moonlight gives off is very um, grayish tone, grayish whitish tone uh, with the moonlight shining over it. And the place, it looks very, very terrifying out there as it's quiet. And all you hear is the blast hitting the shield. And that's where we'll leave off.